Hello and welcome to episode 27 of Shared Discovery, the show and podcast dedicated to sharing the many exciting and enjoyable aspects of games and gaming. I'm your host, Victor, and today I'm joined by Ront. I added T. Welcome back, Ron. Hey! Ron, how hey. are you doing? It's good to be here uh, with an extra tea, and I'm doing well, Victor. How are you? You normally only have one tea. Yeah, right. So you caffeinated today. Just a little good. bit. Good. How you been? Man, uh, pretty all right, you know? Going through some crazy stressful stuff at the moment, but hanging in there. Yeah. It's life. That's how it goes. Are you playing any games to help with that stress? Ooh, uh, Magic the Gathering has Always. been keeping me going. You're still, you're still playing? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What decks are you playing right recently? Um, I just got a new deck. Really? It's a, um, was it Voltron Commander? Okay. Boros uh, Artifact. One shot deck. Yeah. I love it. And I made a One Punch Man deck nice. as well. So. Very cool. I've also been playing some Magic. Mm -hmm. You know, I play it every single week, multiple times a week. <laughs> every week. <laughs> I yeah. even did some card organizing for the first time this year. Hey, it's me crazy. too. It's yeah. crazy. It was in a, just an annoying pile last night. I was like, ah, it's time. It's time. It's time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I felt the same thing like a couple of weeks ago when I was like looking at all these piles and boxes. Everywhere. Like, this has to get better. It, it has to. It has to change. There's just so much miscellaneous stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, it's gone. Yep. So, other than that, playing Boulder's Gate, having a great time with good, that. Fantastic. Good. That's a good studio. Today we're not talking about a good studio. Yeah. Uh, which I guess, so does that segue into our topic today? I think so. <laughs> so today we're going to have a more somber episode today. For sure. Uh, you brought me this topic. You wanted to do a controversies episode. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about Ubisoft. And, mm -hmm. and if anyone knows anything about Ubisoft, you're probably, probably already laughing. Yes. Saying you don't have enough time in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. We don't. We really don't. <laughs> but we're going to be, we'll give you a little bit of history of the company talk about a little bit of their popular games mm -hmm. but we're going to mostly be looking at the controversies mm -hmm. so before we get into that i think it's important to pause because we have a trigger warning here yeah because we'll, we'll let you get into this yeah sure uh so we have a trigger warning today for this episode because this is going to contain references of uh, violence and sexual assault, so be advised. Uh, the gaming industry is very fraught and um, not what I would say good in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And so just be forewarned, if you don't already know, this is some pretty grim and honestly like very triggering stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Be warned, be yeah. prepared. Yeah, and the intention for this is to just help you get informed mm -hmm. as gamers. What kinds right. of games are you playing? What companies are you supporting? Exactly, where is your money going to? And what is your money supporting? And uh, because that's essentially what you're doing when you're buying from one of these companies, yeah. right? Is you are saying these people, whatever they are doing right now, keep doing it. Absolutely. It's a vote of confidence. Yes. So I wanted I wanted to have this warning right at the beginning because right. for some people this episode might not be for you. Yep. That is totally okay. Skip it. That'll be fine. Not a big deal. Come back again come for on, one of our more fun episodes. Come on down. You got and it. So to rewind just a little bit, just want to remind everyone, if, if you want to come back for a more happy episode, make sure you check us out on Instagram, on YouTube, Spotify, right? And I think... It's really important, I'll plug this here, it's really important especially to go to our YouTube channel. We've been migrating our videos to our own YouTube channel because we're going to be having a D&D &D gameplay series Ooh, really soon. I'm so excited. We've been practicing the setup in here, Ron's going to DM, <laughs> Oh yeah. and it's going to kind of roll with our beginner's guide that we had. Mm -hmm. We're going to have another guide on how to make characters. We're going to just play. All right. So I make sure it. you check us out on YouTube. You can listen to us too. We're on Spotify, yeah. Google, Apple, but we have an overhead so you can see our minis as we move around mm -hmm. the game there and then also check us out on instagram at shared discovery show always posting videos of like sh little short funny clips i make of the episodes and then shots of the studio the games we're playing so all right ron let's get in i got a question for mm -hmm. you i like to start some of these off with some trivia hit me so what is ubisoft short for 
Uh, so this is an easy question for me to answer since I read the uh, Wikipedia. I too read the article. <laughs> 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 it's uh, ubiquitous software. Ubiquitous. That's a great word. That's right. It's a great name. Yeah. It's like it feels like a waste of a great name. It is. By the end of the episode, <laughs> <about> man, <laughs> what a waste of an awesome name. Because like, who doesn't want to be ubiquitous and everywhere and like games and Come on. software and. Uh, great. So. I just like that little bit of trivia, and mm -hmm. what their name, the ubiquitous, honestly is fitting, not in a positive way, but the reach across the industry. Yeah. So we'll see that as the episode goes on. So right. today we're going to be talking about Ubisoft, mm -hmm. and let's just kick in, dive into some little bit of the history, where they got started, how, what does the timeline look like? Sure. So the timeline starts all the way back in the 80s, 80s. 88, mm -hmm. right? And the whole, like, before I get too far, the whole company, it, it's a publisher. So it publishes, it distributes video mm -hmm. games for, like, every single system you can think yeah. of they distribute. So it's, like, consoles, PC, smartphones, tablets, both physical and online, and home and portable, video, like, everything you can think of. Like, Ubisoft has their fingers in it think about this ubiquitous world, right right and in 86 so it wasn't 88 so march 28th march 28th 1986 uh, ubisoft was founded by the five guillemont brothers mm -hmm. in france as ubisoft two separate words yes entertainment sa ubisoft was two words originally mm -hmm. but uh um they started out in paris france but soon moved to Créteil, which is a suburb of paris and they worked out of a chateau, which, if you're not familiar, is a type of French mansion, which, where do you get a French mansion to start your <laughs> new company? Oh, they started from the ground up. They built it themselves. Bootstrapped. Yeah, <laughs> you strapped. got it. And this, uh, I was doing the research, reading through the wiki, yeah. same wiki you are, and I was like, okay, these are rich kids. <laughs> yep, these and are rich kids. They, the company, they worked to give, su to sell supplies to farmers. And they were like, okay, these five kids, five brothers were mm -hmm. going through school, getting some experience, like, okay, what can we sell to? Yeah. And they're like, they started with like CDs and electronics and computers, and then they saw the video games were popping off. Like, that's the one. That's the Let's one. Let's do it. Yeah. And the quote in there, I might mess it up, but who cares? It's funny. It's like, their mom was like, you can do that. <laughs> But you have to run the company yourself, darlings. <laughs> and it's like, okay, these are rich kids. <laughs> this is this is hilarious. Oh wow! So you can see their motivations from the very beginning creation mm -hmm. of the company was like, ooh, how do we make money? Video games make money. Let's do that, and you'll see that as we go through the history. Yes. So I wanted yeah. to chime in there. With the and so in a few years later, in '88, they had six developers including Michel Ancel, an animator, and Serge Hasco, a uh, game, te uh, game tester. And uh, you're going to want to remember these names. We're, gonna, because we're unfortunately going to be saying them too yeah, many times. They're going to come up later. Coming up later. And then uh, in 88 as well, Ives Guillemont was put in charge as the chief executive mm -hmm. officer. And then we'll continue for the entire history yep. of Ubisoft. Ives will stay in charge. Yeah. And uh, they release very few games, not many of real note or yeah. mention, like Zombie. I've never heard of it. I was I reading think. through the list. I didn't hear any. I, like, right. I didn't recognize any of these until but, yeah. this one. Yeah, 95, when they released their first big hit, Rayman. That was their breakout hit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I personally enjoyed it. Decent game. Have you ever played Rayman? I think I have in passing, maybe like 15 minutes, but... I haven't really dove in. And that's yeah. interesting, what I found mm -hmm. for these Ubisoft games. Yeah. Like, I just played them in passing. Mm -hmm. Played them at your house or something, but it was never anything that grabbed. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have more about that, too. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> they release very few games, <laughs> no, no public offering. Then after their huge success in 95, the year after they had a public offering, so they're no longer privately owned by the brothers. Mm. They're publicly owned and they got tons of investment money and were able to over the next few years uh, what 19 years they continued to expand almost unchecked yes with no stopping yes they have studios Insane. all over the world Everywhere. grabbing up this developing mm -hmm. grabbing this grabbing this right yep and uh, hasco <laughs> previously mentioned would become the head of the editorial department mm -hmm. in 2001 and carry on until 2019 
so that every game published in that period was under his purview, mm -hmm. and he had the final call on the editorial process. In 2003, they rebranded to Ubisoft. How we know it now. <laughs> pushed the words together and got rid of all the extra fluff. Mm -hmm. And currently, they're sitting at 51 subsidiary Ubisoft companies Oof. that were either bought or developed wholesale by them. And what What is a subsidiary for those that don't? Yeah, so it's pretty much just a company that's owned by this company. Okay. Yeah. So that's when they were, they got all this investing money. You got I'm it. I'm going to grab that company. They have rights to that game mm -hmm. that's selling. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab that. Yeah, okay. that's how they got a lot of like really good selling games and a lot of really good developers is they just bought them all. Yep. And uh, then in 2015, there's an attempted takeover by Vivendi Media, which is a European company that does a lot of media, a yep. lot of media yep. outside of gaming and in gaming. And uh, there was a hostile takeover, but the Guillemont family was able to defend it over a three year period by buying something like Thirty it was million millions, yeah, 30, millions of shares, it millions of shares, thirty million, something shares. like that, and uh, essentially stave off that attack, blocking mm -hmm. Vivendi from doing anything. And then, as soon as Vivendi backed out, uh, you get in two thousand twenty-two, Tencent, yes, the Chinese high quality games right here. Every, <laughs> everyone knows the Tencent has uh, a certain. Yeah, level of quality. Uh, and <laughs> That's a different episode. Right. That, they'll come. They'll come. 49.9% uh, of the total shares in Ubisoft were bought by Tencent. Jeez. So it's pretty much a partnership at this point. Pretty much. Holy mm -hmm. cow, that's so much. And uh, they're headquartered this day uh, in a suburb of Paris. In okay. Montreux or something like that. You just don't pronounce the last one. Yeah, well, I, well, right. okay. Yeah, you're teaching me that yeah. today. You just send it. Pretend like you're saying them <clears throat> and mute them. And then if someone says you're not saying those letters, you attack them and be like, well, how dare you say that? How dare you say that? That's how this French. Is perfect works. French. It's perfect French. <laughs> and before we move on from yeah. that history, for me, what I found really striking, we talked about this in mm -hmm. the pre show, is just how little that talked about video games. Oh, yeah. Then the what, Rayman? They've talked about Rayman <laughs> in the history. It was wild. Like, it blew my mind. The only context they talked about games was we want to buy this developer because mm -hmm. they have rights to that game that's selling. Yeah. And so that, that actually, like, I got onto the wiki and this is a game developer. I'm sure they're going to talk about games throughout. No, it, it read like, I think I described like an article from a Wall Street journal. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, the Economist would the have Economist. this in there. Yeah. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> and that fits perfectly in with their biz, their, their um, business model and their mission from the very creation. Yep. We're going to make money. Right. And all companies have that imperative to make money. But I feel like starting with that and like nothing else. Nothing else. It, it really sets a, a tone mm -hmm. going forward. Do you like I just have this idea. These five brothers were like. I don't know, had never touched a game before, and they're like, oh, do they like that? That's selling. And I doubt they've even played the games. Like, oh, yeah, I doubt. That's crazy yeah. to me. So I just, that's the takeaway I had after reading that. I was like, this is just business. I'm in a business class right now. Yep. Oh, my gosh, I'm learning about hostile takeovers and subsidiaries. What the heck? Oh, yeah, we're learning a lot today. We're learning a lot. So you have... This one section, is, mm -hmm. there's like one section that listed their most popular franchises, mm -hmm. which are Assassin's Creed, of course. I mean, those Assassin's Creed and Love Far Assassin's Cry, Creed, those are yep. their two most popular at this point. So good. And you have Just Dance, Prince of Persia, Rabbids, Rayman, Tom Clancy's, that's huge. There are so many Tom Clancy's games. So oh my gosh. Dude. <laughs> Ghost Recon, Rainbow Six, Rainbow Six Siege, Rain yeah. like, it kept going. Ghost Recon. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I've touched any of these games. <laughs> Holy cow. I, I saw in there they actually made a deal with Tom Clancy himself to use his name. Really? For the games, yeah. Wow. Uh, Watch Dogs is a pretty recent one. Mm -hmm. And that's it. They listed them. Whoa. Like, if you want to know about the games, go to the pages. I was like, I get that, but I'm on your, your wiki page. Tell me a little bit about mm -hmm. your most popular range nothing like do you know so it'll be interesting to read about other 
mm -hmm. other wiki pages from other developers and see if they talk more about the game. Yeah, you know, to see that. Mm -hmm. Because most of this article took up what we're going to be talking about now. <laughs> controversies. The controversies. Like most of the wiki page was this. You get mm -hmm. through the history and they're like, okay, Ubisoft, here's the things that they've done. Like this is front and back printed, these pages that I'm mm -hmm. riffling through right now. And, you know, we're not <laughs> impartial arbiters of no. here. We, you know, we have our biases. We have a side we're we on. We have a side we're on, very clearly. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, let's get into these controversies, okay? Right. You uh, want to start us I'll off? I'll start us off. I'll start us off with some of the uh, less frustrating ones. Mm -hmm. They're all frustrating. They're all but, okay, so Ubisoft Connect, right? So mm. it started out as Uplay, or, and then later changed to Ubisoft Connect. And it serves to manage the digital rights of Ubisoft games on Windows computers, right? So this is called uh, DRM, mm -hmm. right? And this are, these are softwares, to anti-theft softwares, yep. right? Digital rights management. Yep. And so what happens is this led to the criticism, because when they first launched it, the games were required to always be online. Always. Always have this these digital rights management, this DRM running. And what would happen, and you have direct experience with this, yes. is what would happen is people would lose save files mm -hmm. where they couldn't even get in the game, they couldn't play the single player po portions of the oh game. Lord, you yes. always had to be online. And I have experience with this from Diablo 3. Oh, really? Right? That, that happened at like the first week of the game. You couldn't get on. That's you couldn't wild. play. Yeah. Why, why would you release a game if no one can play it for a week, like just wait a week, what's wrong with you? Anyway, I don't know. but yeah, yeah. So this situation was aggravated after Ubisoft servers were struck with a denial of service attacks that made Ubisoft's games unplayable due to the DRM. And that's called the DDoS. The DDoS. Mm -hmm. And you said, which which Assassin Creed was this? It was. F uh, this was around Assassin's. Well, I play all games like yeah. years after their release, but I was playing Assassin's Creed 4, really enjoying yeah. it, and then this landed, and I couldn't play any of my games for like a month a straight. Month. So I had I totally oh. abandoned Ubisoft at that yeah. point. I, I've never bought a never. game since. Jeez. And it's like how many people like you have just bailed. Bailed. Yeah. Yeah, walk the plank, jump ship, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, black flag. <laughs> uh, this one was really egregious. Yes. I, it sticks out in my mind. Yeah. A month, that's insane. Not being able to play your game for a month. How do you expect people to stay around? Right, and it's like I paid good money for this. I paid it's $60. It's premium, premium price there. And, like, I love the Anno yeah. series, and, yeah, uh, and, let's move on. <laughs> and so what I will say here is this is also a controversy because these DRMs don't even work. No. Mm -hmm. So when they first released this, the hackers cracked it in a day. Day one. <laughs> they got past it day one. So it doesn't even work. It makes it unplayable mm -hmm. and unfun for people. So let's just do away with that. And I will say they're not using this anymore. They do still have their Ubisoft platform that every company has. Right. Epic Games and... Everyone was like, Steam worked, let me do it, right? Mm -hmm. Epic Games and Xbox Live, and there's so many of them. Uh, but they don't require this running at all times. It's just when you boot the game, they'll run a check. So that's hmm. something. <laughs> okay, next one. Eh. Blockchain. 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 Do you want me to take this yeah, one? Yeah, take this one. Blockchain is a method of recording information that makes it impossible or difficult uh, for the system to be changed, so that information is always there. Change, hacked, manipulated, can't do it. Yeah. It's set in stone, right? Uh, blockchain is a distributed ledger, so think like those ledger books bankers have. It's one of those, but every entry in it is spread out all over the place, yet the entries still somehow communicate and uh, understand and relate to each other. Uh, and it duplicates and distributes uh, transactions across the network of computers participating in the blockchain. So all of the computers that have the blockchain on it are working together to keep the blockchain running. And it's like a, a system of uh, checks and balances mm -hmm. so that the information always remains untampered oh, and wow. nobody has the master key to like change this information, right? Because it's on all these systems. You can't go to all of these systems and make mm -hmm. changes to everything. I see. Just, so there are like unique digital copy to, copies of data mm -hmm. across this blockchain. Yep. 
And uh, we'll probably have a whole episode about the blockchain because gaming and the blockchain is hilarious in my it's mind. Hilarious. <laughs> uh, but according to this Ives, yeah, Ives Guillemot, yep. one of Ubisoft's co-founders, we've talked about him, uh, crypto-based content and video games <laughs> uh, will allow players to actually own their digital property within the game. It's just like contradiction yeah well <laughs> oh, growing the game industry <laughs> i just can't even not laugh like what do, well, do you own this data what does that mean and so the idea behind uh, this i watched a video on this and yeah. the idea that these developers is to say is like you can use this cryptocurrency to get items in this game and since it's unique you can play it and take it into other games but that makes no sense. You can already do that without the blockchain. Oh, like, yeah. Like, you just do it. Like, it's just like, it doesn't work because different games work differently. Yep. Or if it does, all of the games are going to be samey in some way. There's going to be a whale that buys the best item, brings it to another game, and just crushes the game. It's just illogical. It doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't work. It's pretty much just a get rich quick scheme, mm -hmm. like a lot of the blockchain and like crypto scams that we saw like crash yeah. the crypto market recently. Yep, so. NFTs, mm. ooh, way to go. Yeah, so uh, dumb and it doesn't work, is that Th our? That's, uh, that's what I put, <laughs> dumb and it doesn't work. And you know, uh, you have a point here that it's just a high tech pyramid scheme. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that is so accurate, <laughs> that really is. Yeah. Uh, and it really fits in with the ethos of the company. Mm -hmm. so, okay, what is popping off right now? Will that make us money? Invest in it, invest, invest. Right. Right. So that's Yai, <laughs> Ives Guillemot, that's <laughs> their business model. <laughs> Ives, yeah. <laughs> and they put millions into this. Millions Tens of dollars. Tens of millions yes. of dollars into so this. So much money. So. And so these two controversies here, and the next one, mm -hmm. they all really fit into this, like you said, this larger network of controversies across the gaming industry. Right. Like, this isn't unique to just Ubisoft. Ubisoft is just one of the most egregious, yes. like, like, perpetrators. Very obvious. Yeah. Right. Okay, Ron. Yep. The big one. There's a big one. So. <sighs> Deep breath. Yeah. Again, trigger warning. Yes. Uh, stemming from a wave of sexual misconduct accusations in June and July of 2020, mm -hmm. uh, Ubisoft had a number of employees accused of misconduct from both internal and external sources. Between Ubisoft's internal investigation and a study by the newspaper, uh, French newspaper Liberation or Liberation or something like that. Uh, employees had been found to have records of sexual misconduct and troubling behavior going back up to 10 years, years which had been noted and dismissed by the human resource departments. And I say departments because it's those subsidiaries, those 51 subsidiaries we talked about, are also affected by this. Yeah, it, it's really... A company-wide like across mm -hmm. the globe this uh, culture exists oh yeah. and tons of people have quit or been fired in relation to these uh accusations coming out and let's get into the real nitty-gritty here so starting right off the bat this is a guy we haven't heard about before but ashraf ismail the mm -hmm. creative director of assassin's creed valhalla the mm -hmm. norse one that yeah. just came out recently mm -hmm. uh stepped down due to these allegations being made so where he is now, nobody knows. Yes, but they stepped down, probably got a cool severance package on the way out. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, uh, no, you're good. Uh, that's that's too, real. too real. Yes. Uh, and he'll probably get a job somewhere else. So, probably. Uh, yeah, so he was terminated in 2020. Ubisoft announced two executives that were also accused of misconduct had been placed on leave uh, while they were performing their internal review of these accusations. And... Um, doesn't really say if those guys got let go or mm -hmm. what happened to them. Or, uh, and, and then uh, specific accusations were made at Ubisoft Toronto, where the studio co-founder Maxime Bellan uh, was forced to resign by management due to sexual misconduct. Um, yeah. And it, it keeps going it this keeps way. Going. Like they, these higher ups across the globe and all of their studios and many of their studio, like all is a big generalization, but like it, it happens, like it's rampant in the company. And then mm -hmm. there's a statistics that we saw here. Um, it was 
So there are, at a certain point, the company had s over 16,000 developers. This is mm. just developers, right? And of those developers, oh, you got it here. Yep. yep. So let me read that off mm -hmm. here for you. So Guillemont sent out a company-wide letter in 2020 summarizing their investigation, finding that nearly 25% of employees had experienced or witnessed misconduct in the last two years. The company was implementing a new four-point plan to correct the problem. So if you were an employee at Ubisoft, you had a one in four chance to get sexually assaulted. Experience it or witness it. Like, what? That's insane. That is like, one in four. One in four. 16,000 developers, it's like 4,000 developers minimum, right? Yeah, 4,000 developers, and that's not even counting for all of the other positions that exist within companies. No, right? yeah, like thousands of people. And like that's not counting your like, your your just like support staff. Yeah, like just it's, it's insane. And then yeah, continuing on, um, the 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 he was forced to resign sexual misconduct issues and led some employees working there to express strong concerns that the way the studio and HR and management disregard complaints just enables this behavior for men, right? And Tommy Francois, the vice president of the editorial and creative services, had been placed on disciplinary action leave uh, around July, and by August, he was let go. So at this point, the company's bleeding tons of people. So many people. And then, I mean, we even um, Hackote, Hascote? Hascote? Yeah, yeah, Hascote. Like, he'd been with the company since 88, I think. Yeah. And he was... OG. He was OG, and he was in charge of so many games, and mm -hmm. he, inf like, infected is what I was going to say. Yeah. But I think that's a good word here. Yeah. I was going to say in impacted, but impacted and infected how the Assassin's Creed games were made, mm -hmm. right? Because he wanted to avoid the use of female protagonists. Yeah, like, completely. Completely. Because... Mm -hmm quote they don't sell games females do not sell games in his thought and so not just sexual misconduct now we're getting into open sexism open sexism and you know the reason why they said they didn't have support female characters in their assassin creeds are far cry oh do tell victor <laughs> They had difficulty animating female characters. They said they couldn't do it. They're, they said they couldn't do it. <laughs> no, it was done in earlier games. Tons of previous games. And they would go on to do it some more in future games. Like, what uh, the heck? So, and then it says, um, Ubisoft employees said that following Assassin's Creed games, which did feature female protagonists at release, including Assassin's Creed Syndicate, mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed Origins, the editorial department wanted to remove or downplay all female roles. All female <laughs> roles. What does that mean? All female roles. What does that mean? How is it so wide sweeping and then nobody bats an eye at this? Yeah. Or like, was there a discussion around this? There was, and the discussion came from Hasco. This was due to the belief that Hascote had sent to the department that female characters did not sell games, and because of his clout within the company, the developers would have to make compromises to meet his expectations, such as the inclusion of strong male characters. If, if they included a female character, you had to have a strong male character with them. And if the females were used within a cutscene, which he didn't like, Hascote, thought they were bad ways to deliver narrative. There had, guy. They had to be attended with a male character. If we didn't know where this guy uh, came from, I'd be asking, where did this guy come from? Where did this guy come from? <laughs> it's like France. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, and spurred by these claims, uh, the newspaper Liberation, a uh, French newspaper, had begun a deeper investigation, and they released a two-part uh, two report that claimed that Ubisoft had a toxic workplace culture, which I feel like this is pretty obvious at this point. Yes, yes. And it was corroborated by employees from other studios uh, that suggested some of these problems had extended from the human resource uh, heads of the company ignoring complaints being made against Hasco. Yeah, and it says that these had been reported directly to Ives, mm -hmm. Mom. Yep. Directly. Many employees said that these were directly to him. And 
sweep it under the rug, keep them there for yep. years until it comes out, until this mm -hmm. Me Too movement, because this is what sparked all of this and all yep. gave people the courage to speak up. And uh, there's a quote from Ives saying that he has no knowledge of this. I have no knowledge. Any of this going on, which is just, you know, good old-fashioned lawyer speak. You know, he's just trying to cover himself. He's, yeah. That's a bold-faced lie, yeah. especially when there's reports of tons of people coming to mm -hmm. him with these concerns and problems. Yeah. It's just outrageous. Uh, like, how can you say that and then say, like, you're, you're not being held accountable for this? No. What? Because I, Ron, 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 <laughs> Ron, he makes some money. You know, in fact, they didn't, uh, you know, remove any of his power or his role in the company until mm -hmm. two of his games didn't just underperform. Oh, that's Hascoat, yeah. Hascoat, yeah. yes, yes. Um, so Tom Clancy's The Vision 2 and Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breaking Point, Breakpoint underperformed, which gave Ubisoft justification to diminish Hascoat's oversight. That was the justification. That was the justification. Not the, uh, let me quote here from this, using sexual, sex, sexual misconduct and harassment to intimidate those who criticized him. Right, that, that's okay. But his games flop, and that's, that's what loses him the job. It's right into the ethos of the company, Ron. Right into the ethos. Make money, Victor, at all costs. Money, money, money. Oof, so, okay. wow. wow. All right. yeah, was all right. that that one? Though? I think that was Hascout. Well, that where's he? Hascout. Where's he at now? I think he's gone. I he, think they booted him. They booted him. They booted him from the company, and now Ives, he issued a, in September 2020, mm -hmm. he issued a formal apology to the company on the lack of responsibility in the matters of these prior events, and he said, he. he is truly sorry and is going to invest one million dollars in programs of diversity and inclusion to remedy to help remedy these um, these code violations and improve the systems and processes at the company one million dollars Ron. yeah and most of that actually went to a graduate program graduate program so <sighs> Okay. You're really fixing those problems there, yeah, guys. Well, well, check it out. You know, th this graduate program, these million dollars, will focus on creating opportunities for underrepresented groups, including women and people of color, because you want them to work here when you haven't fixed the college. And, like, um, you may be noticing at home that I'm, like, chuckling or laughing, but it's more of a nervous... This is, like, nervous rage laugh. Yeah, because yeah. if I don't laugh, if I don't let something out, mm -hmm. I'll just be incredibly angry and uh it, it's difficult right like this is a we're coping this is yes we're this coping. is a coping mechanism well yep this is a mental health check i hope you're doing well yep. all out there hope we're all Take hanging in deep there breaths yep. drink some water because it does get worse from here pause the show yeah pause the come show come back <laughs> there'll, be more. there'll we, be more we do have some positive things at the end we'll get to them we do have them. We, have some... we just got to trudge through mm -hmm. the filth Phil. Okay. So where were we? We're back. Justifications diminish Hasco. We got that done. Complaints yeah, reported directly to Ives and he dismissed them. Gamma Sutra, also uh, that's a uh, game journalist site. They corroborated that these issues appear to replicate across all the studios, right? Two heads got kicked out. Um, uh, right now, two positions were created, the head of workplace culture and head of diversity and inclusion, and they were created to oversee the safety and morale of employees going forward, yeah. right? So uh, he's making some changes, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The million dollars, got two new positions. It's looking good, but we'll see. Superficially, mm -hmm. it's looking good. Right. Superficially, it's looking good. And we've got that sick like statistic that absolutely disgusting statistic of 25 percent of the employees having experienced or witnessed misconduct in, yeah in the last two years two years and here's my thing too right mm -hmm. it says that with Hascoat specifically and on sell which we'll see here in a moment mm -hmm. i've directly knew about this and was had close relations with them and Hascoat had been with the company since 1988 right and this is two years but how how long has that been going on the whole time the probably. whole time yeah. like 
I can't say it definitely because that's like slander. Slander, and I can get in trouble for that legally. But it is my opinion yes. that that has probably been going on for a long mm-hmm. time, if not the whole time. Uh, and um, same with like Ansel in September 2020. There's that number 2020. Mm-hmm. It just keeps coming around. Yep. Uh, Michel Ansel leaves Ubisoft and the game industry entirely to work on a wildlife preserve. <laughs> That this seems so funny. suspicious. It was left in good hands. We're going to work in a wildlife <laughs> preserve. That's just my calling. <laughs> yeah, and uh, everybody Gosh. who was working on the project says it was not in a good state for him mm-hmm. to leave. It was not in good hands. It was a mess. And him leaving uh, probably wasn't related to that. Uh, like, what? It just liberation, coming back to them, from the Ansel's attention, like, he just uh, was, he haphazard. was haphazard. Yeah. His management style was abusive. Mm-hmm. And if he had a lack of organization and leadership on the project mm-hmm. early. And then back, to, back again, Liberation claimed that his close relationship with Ives Guillemot was what allowed the situation to continue until right. 2020. Because Ansel and uh, the other guy, they're both... It's, it's top down Yeah, at it, this company. It's the management, right? Yep. It is everybody's top down. Like, Ives is friends with these people, or at least very close mm-hmm. working relationship with both of these fellas. And then you think that is it true about the rest of the upper management? Like, they all know each other. They work yeah. closely together. And we read off, like, five or six names yeah. in addition to... On cell and what was his name? Harcoat or what? another one. He Hughes Record, the Ricoeur. managing director of Ubisoft Singapore, stepped down from yes. the role after these internal reviews. Mm-hmm. Re- he remained with it, the company, though. And it's man, it just keeps going. And I implore you, if you want to learn more about this, because I already want to get to some of the good. Right. I want to get. I don't want to be stuck in this mud, you know. With yeah. Them. Uh, but I implore you to read through this if you want some more of the specific details. But at this time, it really hasn't improved much. But I will say that the employees are pushing back. Yep. And oh, <clears throat> big time! Like uh, the French trade union, for example, mm-hmm. Solidaires Informatique initiated a class action lawsuit against Ubisoft mm-hmm. in relation to the allegation Solidaires Informatique had previously represented workers in the case of workplace concerns at French developer Quantic Dream, which is an old name there. I haven't heard them in a long time. At the trial in 2021, uh, the Telegram reported that very little had changed within uh, Ubisoft, the yep. company, as many of the HR staff that were part of the problem remained in their positions within the company, both in its France headquarters and its Canadian divisions. Like, so a year later. A year later, after saying we've changed so many things, we've yep. improved so many. I was going on the record saying, I'm sorry, we're gonna change things. Mm-hmm. A year later, a, a union has to take legal action against this company because they haven't changed anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it's like if you we go up to July 2021, Mm -hmm. when Blizzard was dealing with all this, uh, about 500 employees across Ubisoft signed a letter of solidarity with the people that walked out at Blizzard. I love it. I love to see it. I love that. Yeah, and then Ives, of course, was (sighs) like, "Ah, we have heard clearly from this letter that not everyone is confident in the process as we have been put in place for misconduct reports. And the employees are like, Ubisoft continues to protect and promote known offenders and their allies. We see management continue to avoid the issues. And they have, in the employee's response, they included three demands. Three demands. Of their managers between the studios to avoid issues. <clears throat> For the employees to have collective seat in ongoing discussions to improve the workplace situation and establishing cross-industry collaboration for how to handle future offenses. So this is great. Yeah. They're coming up with the three-point plan stuff. and yeah. pushing back against the company. Right. And, like, this is definitely a civil rights issue, too. Yes. Like, they have to defend their rights Absolutely. of not being harassed at work. And mm-hmm. if this is what it takes, then that's what it takes. Word. 
solidarity with you. Right. And Absolutely. just the audacity on Ives. I can't get over it. Like how he's just constantly like wishy-washy mm -hmm. and like all over the place. Right. He's friends with these people yet. He's like sad about all this and he's trying to make a change, but change hasn't happened. So like, what is he doing? Yeah. What does he do every day? <laughs> For a year. What has he been doing? What's he doing? But yeah, so these three point plans to end this cycle of simply rotating the troublesome executives around. Oh, yeah. Where have we seen that one before? And managers to avoid the issues. Right. right? I really hope something good comes of this company, of mm -hmm. this now. The article kind of ended here in 2021, of what I was reading. Mm hmm. And so. We're gonna have to see how this comes along, but there's a lot of, a lot of lawsuits you can read about as well. Mm -hmm. um, Some so good the Kotaku. Company does not goals. seem to be in a good place. A lot no. of employees are left. A lot of leadership have been fired or moved right. around. And yes. uh, Ka Kotaku, uh, what was it? Mm -mm, translated a report from Salders Informatique uh, saying that this that Ubisoft, uh, as a legal entity, uh, is for institutional sexual harassment, for setting up, maintaining, and reinforcing a system where sexual harassment is tolerated because it is more profitable for the company to keep harassers in place than to, than to protect its employees. That spells it out. Yep. And uh, that'll be answered in French courts. Yep. Oof. So yeah. that, that's Ubisoft. That's Ubisoft. But okay, well, let's talk about some games, right? What a bunch of swell fellas, yeah. So let's talk about some games. I have a question I have for you. After all this discussion about the controversies, Ubisoft, their history, mm -hmm. whew, are the games worth your time? Are the games good? Right? Does all of this justify, like, it's not justified, but, like, are the games at least good? So I would argue that some of them are good, but they're not worth your time. Not worth, I like that. Mm -hmm. That is a very succinct way to spell it out. Mm -hmm. Be good, but not worth your time in the so, context of supporting this company. Like, look, I loved Black Flag. I mm -hmm. loved Assassin's Creed 2. Like, uh, Tom Clancy, I've played all the Rainbow Six games. Okay. Like, I loved all of these games, but after learning all of this, I cannot endorse anyone spending time on an Ubisoft sure. game like this is what you this is where your money's going right it's the 25 percent of people being mistreated that's, that's what you're paying thousands for thousands of people yeah you're paying for thousands of people to be continuously mm -hmm. damaged and harmed and yeah. traumatized like uh, I wish I could refund all my games <laughs> I feel that I haven't played a lot of Ubisoft games, but I feel that way about The Wizard. <laughs> another <laughs> and, episode. Yeah, another uh, episode. Big we'll episode. Maybe. Uh, Maybe. These episodes are hard. This is dreary. <laughs> but I found, as I like to do, I like the arbiters of truth Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> so I found a Reddit article, and I I've was just never like, heard that one before. I just wanted to see what what the mass fans that have played the games a lot, what yeah. do they think, right? So right. I found an article from 2020. Posted by Joshua Kane, 0208. Thank you for this, Joshua. Love Sparks a really good conversation in the mm -hmm. comments. And the title of the article is, Ubisoft is the king of mediocre. <laughs> I totally agree with this <laughs> yes. opinion. And so I was just reading through this, and there's a lot of common consensus here that mediocrity Ubiquitous mediocrity. Ubiquitous mediocrity. <laughs> it's the consensus across the company. I love this first one here. I'll just read. Through, we'll read through some of these comments and sure, talk about. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I've come to the conclusion that Ubisoft games are the equivalent of comfort food, like McDonald's. Their food isn't amazing. It's nothing special. But sometimes you just want McDonald's. Yeah, and that's how they get you, right? Mm -hmm. Is every once in a while, like. Oh man, the McRib is back, right? <laughs> oh, I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> right? That's hilarious. Cause, you know, that's actually so funny because when I was looking for this, there was an ad about the McRib <laughs> <laughs> coming back. Oh man, that's hilarious. What yeah, a coincidence, yeah. Honestly, is Assassin's Creed the McRib <laughs> of the gaming industry? Because every few years it's like, it's back. 
and it's not really the same. Not really the same. <laughs> Different kind of meat. Yeah. <laughs> it looks the same. Yep. And you same name. It, right. But it, it's, it might not be the meat you remember. Oh, Lord. Okay, the next one. <laughs> I like this one. Uh, Ubisoft is the king of being on the cusp of something great. Like, right on the precipice mm -hmm. of doing a truly great game, but mm -hmm. then making some numbskull decisions or having a weak narrative experience or launching a super buggy or just fumbling at the goal line. Fumbling at the goal line is really like, that's what I thought of Assassin's Creed Valhalla mm -hmm. when I was like watching people play it or like uh, reading reviews and stuff. It's totally a fumbled game. Mm -hmm. It could be so much better. It could be like uh, the one Assassin's Creed that takes place in Greece, which I personally was really tempted to buy and play. But I gotta remember yeah, this stuff. Gotta right? remember this stuff. It's like that. Mc, it's that McDonald's it's the, it's the reference. McDonald's. Man. I'm guilty. We're Ugh. we're guilty here. Well, that's what's important to note in this episode. We're not high horse in you. No. And it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not simple. We just want to play games we like. So it's right? like, ah, why are you doing this behind the scenes? Yes. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you, why are you doing, doing this, this to, to us? To us and to your employees and people that's at the end of the, these people mm -hmm. and so i really like this point because it's like think about assassin's creed far cry the concepts are great mm -hmm. and they fumble them with what we've seen are all of these numbskull decisions yep. the execution Ex is never there yeah okay next one here yeah. <laughs> this one's hilarious yeah ubisoft games feel like they've been developed by an ai at this point i never thought of that until now Me that's either. Genius. That it's just formulaic. It works. Uh, like to, like the definition of formulaic. Like that's, they love it. That's their bread and butter. They wouldn't have it any other way. Mm -hmm. That's just how they make games. Yeah, and so like in some of the th comments I was seeing, I didn't put mm -hmm. them here, but it's like, the Ubisoft formula is just kind of old, mm -hmm. at this point, right? Yeah, that always it's chasing not, trends. Always. Ch that's what it is. Trend chasing. Mm -hmm. What works. What sells. What Money. Ooh. Ooh, what can we make money so we can get more chateaus? Ooh, more chateaus. <laughs> <laughs> and I. <laughs> and uh, uh, you brought that up, but I just gotta say, it was called the chateau. The chateau. It didn't have a name. It didn't have a place. It didn't have an address. It was just the chateau. In the That's article. so rich. So, yeah. That's such rich kid stuff, dude. It's <laughs> so sorry to distract. Let's get no, back. No, it's at fun. This yeah. is, we gotta have fun. We, we gotta, gotta have, have fun. fun here at the end. Come on. Right. Come on, Ron. It's Why do we do this podcast if it's not fun? Exactly. And it's always fun to punch up. <laughs> Can right confirm, at, brothers. Right at the rich people. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. This yes. one, I really, really liked this one. Mm -hmm. I think this summed up a lot of this episode. Oh. Okay. Yep. This is what happens when you care only about share value and not about your customers. They aren't alone, but they're definitely one of the prime examples of just releasing safe, formulaic games over and over. And over and, and over, over and over. <laughs> and maybe I did put it here. The Ubisoft style of open world game is really stale at this point, and I have zero interest in playing the na next Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed. <laughs> I love my misspeaks to the <laughs> Assassin's Creed. We're both killing it on We're the misspeaks. We're killing it. Yeah. We're killing it. Okay, uh, the next Assassin's Creed game or the next Far Cry games. Take a effing risk and make something exciting. Mm -hmm. Until then, you're dead to me. <laughs> Just like the Call of Duty series. Yawn. Yawn is such a great way to end that. <laughs> you're dead to me. It's banal. It's played out. It's been done. I'm Ubisoft doesn't do new or original. Dude, I... I re I'm, this is so disappointing because I remember mm -hmm. when Assassin's Creed came out. So good. It was so revolutionary. It was so different mm -hmm. and fresh for yeah. the time period. It was really fun, too. It was one of the few games that I've actually beaten. Yeah. Like 100%ed. 100%ed. Yeah, I only have Assassin's a couple Creed. of those. Oh, I love it so much. This, uh, there's a, the story is just, it's well written. And yeah. I could go. What on. I love about it too is I would watch you play, right? Yeah. And I'm like, when you watch a person that can play those games well, at least the first one, because they're yeah. so mechanically tight, I'm like, oh, you just feel dope. 
Yeah. It's really awesome. And it takes so much to, in the first one at least, it felt like you earned that. Yeah. You earned that right to be really good at Assassin's Creed, just untouchable, right? Yeah, because I liked the, the Hidden Blade, right? Mm -hmm. And I've watched videos about how the Hidden Blade is just illogical and do isn't functional. That doesn't matter, it's cool. Yeah. It's so cool. And I'm watching it, you're like, I'm doing a Hidden Blade only run. I'm like, <laughs> but isn't that hard? You're like, that's the point. And you look so cool, just blocking, stab, yeah. block, stab. And then I'd try it, I'm like, I can't. <laughs> you make it look so easy <laughs> and it's like a dance but that's again the tragedy of ubisoft games is i love that we, they're so cool and they're so good mm -hmm. and there's so much to love about them but they just it's almost like they don't want you to buy their stuff you, they don't want you to like care or invest or like buy this stuff yeah it's just Mixed messages the it whole is way mixed down. Mixed messaging, yeah. right? And all I can say is, you're ubiquitously <laughs> dead to me. <laughs> Did I? I messed that. I, I was trying to use the ubiquitous. Yeah. Ubiquitously? That's dead. a hard word. Right? Dead to me. Or, no, yawn. Yawn. <laughs> yeah, that's my response to Ubisoft these days. Yawn. If it wasn't so messed up, it's just yawn. It's just yawn. And okay, so in this last point, is it worth your time? And are the games good? The general uh, conversation is that the games are fun for a little bit, but not great. Mm -hmm. And then you had this point here. I'll let you read this. Oh, yeah. This is, this comes from uh, somebody I really respect in like the. <laughs> Oh, it's weird to say video game journalism okay. or whatever it is sure. we're doing here. Uh, I guess are we journalists? I mean, after this. We just, we, we just read off wiki stuff. It counts. Is that journalism? It counts. Wow, this is great. <laughs> Research was involved. <laughs> yeah, There's sources somewhere. This is fantastic. Right? Okay. Uh, but Stephanie Sterling, uh, Commander Stephanie Sterling, uh, has been around for a long time and has always been on the case of Ubisoft. And... I think she put it real apt, really well, that after we've learned all of this, mm -hmm. Ubisoft should never be allowed to just forget. Mm -hmm. Like, that's it. They should never be allowed to forget mm -hmm. the things they've done. Yeah. The people they've hurt. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think that's very perfect and succinct there because if we go back through that timeline, of all of the harassment and sexual allegations and all of the lawsuits. That is what Ives was trying to do time and time again. Just putting these fake practices to just forget. Yep. Just to move on. And just kind of sweep it under the rug. Under the rug. And don't think about it. Don't look at it. Don't talk about it. it. Was from him and HR and moving employees around. And Stephanie, I 100% agree. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So keep on rocking in the free world, Stephanie. And uh, I guess our last question for today, our outro question yep. is, uh, what, what, what did we learn today? Too what? much. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, honestly, I learned, for me, the, the purpose of this episode was learning. Mm -hmm. Right? What are we getting into with our games? And so the big lesson right. for me is when I play a game, to learn about who I'm supporting better. Mm -hmm. Right? Because... They try to hide that. Yeah. They try to make you forget. They try right. to so just peel back the layers, get that knowledge mm -hmm. of okay, am I supporting someone good? Am I supporting someone bad? And I always go back to Relogic mm. for Terraria because mm -hmm. I they're fantastic developers. Saints, yeah. They're saints. And they're always giving back. They're never they've never charged DLC ever. Their game has never gone above ten dollars. Constantly updating it. Constantly updating it. What? And controversies come out, right? Like there's the new controversy about um, the Unity games made with Unity. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember what company, but they're trying to charge people that use that software twenty cents a piece for when someone uninstalls your game. That's insane. People just uninstall games sometimes. Yeah. Or like, what if you're just uninstalling a game and moving it to another computer? Right. It's and just uh, so <laughs> punishing. So Terraria came out and said, we hate that. That's bad. We don't use Unity, but right. that's bad for the industry. Mm -hmm. we're, they gave $100,000 to two open source 
engines. I can't remember the name. I should have looked it up. And they're like, we're committed from this point forward to give them $1,000 a month to ensure that these stay open source and quality and usable for everyone. And that can that's going to benefit everyone. Yeah. Like, not just their company, not just the, the like, who owns the uh, engines or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's everyone. Anyone who's going to use the, the yeah. software is benefiting. Anyone who's going to play a game that's made in this software is benefiting from that. And I feel like the $1,000 a year or what a was month. it? A month? Mm-hmm. That's going to go way further than the million dollars I've put towards a graduate s- scholarship. I- Because, I mean, think about that. He's like, we need to get more people of color and women in here so we can harass them. Yeah. Bro. Like, really? What? You think just getting more people that you can take advantage of in the industry is going to make problems go away? So so I always go back to ReLogic, and Terraria at this point, They've had these good practices for over a decade now, and they're the ninth best-selling game ever. ever. That's impressive. Right. And it's an indie company, mm-hmm. like a no-name, like... Indie. That's all they've done, yeah. right? Is that's it. Terraria, that's they, it. They are developing games in the background, but he's like, I don't know, it's just profitable to make Terraria good. He said, still, in this year, uh, there was a statistic back in 2022 that he was still selling 600,000 copies a month. Like, still. And he's like, we want to make another game, but, like, I don't know. It's still working. It's too good. It's too good. (laughs) And so that's the big lesson, the big takeaway for me, Mm -hmm. is learn the controversies, learn what's going on at the companies and Mm -hmm. the people that, where your money's going. I think that's a great, uh, a great answer. And I think that is kind of what we're getting at here Mm -hmm. is, like, yeah, figure out what you're supporting. do you want to make the world better? I feel like most people want to make the world a better so. place, right? I do. I, th- I do. I think most people do. Right. Yeah. And like education and learning about these things, sure, they're dark and they can be depressing and they can bring you down, but that's not the point, right? Is The point is to resist this, to fight against it. And just like, Support the good. for me too, like even in that, I was so happy to hear about the employees like, no, we're pushing back. Yeah. We're, we're solidarity with these mm-hmm. companies. We want you to do these things to fix the industry because we don't want to leave. We yeah. love games because that's what we forget in this too is there's mm-hmm. so many developers that want to make you great games right. but are just screwed by people like mm-hmm. Ives. Ives who is just, will just buy your company and yeah. be like, you're now a part of this culture. Oh, I hate that thing. <laughs> right, like, uh, what? Golly. So... The lesson here at the bottom of the hour, play indie games. Yeah, generally. So, yeah, I hope you all learned something. Honestly, like, it was a hard episode, but I I feel good. Mm-hmm. I feel good knowing this mm-hmm. and sharing this information, getting it out there. Yeah, good, because mm-hmm. uh, we should never let Ubisoft forget this stuff. No, mm-hmm. don't let them forget. Never let them forget. Okay, Ron. Yeah, Victor? I think we got to wrap it up. That's it, huh? This is a wrap, episode 27. <laughs> Wow. It felt like I was wrestling a bear really? the whole time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> but if you have some questions, you have some input about this show, pull, like, please reach out to us. Yeah, right? please do. Please let us know. You can reach us at shareddiscoveryshow mm-hmm. at gmail.com. Check us out on Instagram. Post in there. We said at the beginning of the hour. Videos, short little snippets, thing from the set pictures of the set just fun things of us playing games and there that's where you'll be up to date on when we play uh post our D D footage gameplay footage Some dungeons and dragons dungeons and dragons right for the uninitiated it's gonna be fun we're yeah. no critical role but we're gonna have a good time <laughs> oh please don't compare me to don't critical role to i'm not gonna try <laughs> i'm not gonna try oh man but thank you bctv for having us. This yeah, is, thanks, guys. We can't, we can't do this without. Yeah, I got to yeah. look here. Yes, thank you, BCTV. Um, and then, oh, yes, the Instagram is the same as the email, shared discovery show. And then I just want to, again, make, a, uh, make an announcement here. Like, subscribe to our YouTube, because that's where we're going to be putting these D&D gameplay videos, if you right. want to see, see us play them. But mm-hmm. do check us out on 
the plot on Spotify, Google, Apple, if you just want to listen. That's all the totally socials. fine. All the socials. Okay. All right. Plugging over. Chilling over. Let's wrap it up, Ron. You Let's got Let's get it. out of here. Okay. Right. So, thank you for joining us on episode 27 of Shared Discovery. As we close, please make sure to have fun. Be kind to others. Like, I think that's a lesson for this episode. Yeah, just be just kind. Be kind to others really? and play games. So, Ron, sign us out. Riches must be divided, but real wealth can be shared. Thanks, guys. Have a good See one. Next time.